Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're here for the first time, thank you. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and check out my other videos. If you're here for a second or third or fourth painting, thank you so much for coming back and I look forward to seeing what you guys paint. So today's video is perfect for my first time painters. These are great videos to just kind of get you comfortable with the brush, comfortable with mixing your paint, and the kind of the way these are set up, you're going to do kind of a crazy abstract background. You are welcome to switch out colors if you want. Um, and then we'll use black paint and put a silhouette design on there. Um, and that kind of solidifies your composition. So again, this is excellent practice just to get comfortable with the process of painting and perfect for my first time and beginner painters. If you want to do a different silhouette design, um, just Google uh, the subject matter and silhouette of what do you want to do and feel free to switch it up and make the painting your own. Use this as just kind of a, a guideline, a step-by-step -step of what to do. Um, with that being said, in the description box below, you're going to see a link to a supply kit and in that supply kit is everything that you need to grab um, materials, paints, brushes, canvas for this particular painting. So check out the supply kit, grab the materials that you need, and then pick up the video again. With practice, you get better and more comfortable. So keep on finding ways to have a creative outlet on a monthly basis. Your future self will be very grateful that you did. So uh, I think it's enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started painting. Alright guys, this is going to be an awesome, fun painting for my first time painters. So grab your supplies, turn on your favorite music, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now for today's painting, um, you're going to get really comfortable with uh, some wet-on-wet -wet blending. So if you're using student grade paint, I want you to apply your paint uh, kind of thick and that is going to help with your blending. So here we're using a light yellow, white plus yellow, and kind of putting our horizon line, and you wanna go about three inches from the bottom, doesn't have to be exact. And then you're gonna take that light lemony yellow, be very generous, throw it on the canvas in this kind of weird shape, and then you can see where I grabbed some of that direct yellow, slapped it right on top of there. Now moving into the white and kind of putting a barrier um, of white in between our next color. And here we're taking white plus blue, and you do want to clean your brush out really good before you do this color change. And we're going to fill in the remaining space with this white and blue mixture. Now I do want you to take a deep breath because I do not want you painting as fast as the video. So please pause the video as you need, rewind, go back to something. Um, this did speed up a little faster than I was anticipating, but take this as what you need at your pace. So here we added a little bit more blue to our uh, light blue mixture to make a medium blue and applied it to the top portion of the canvas. And you can see here that I'm actually using um, brush strokes that are going the full width of the brush and going obviously kind of fast, it is sped up, but blending the two colors together. So as a first time painter, just kind of play with this. See how maybe some of that dark blue is blending into the white compared to the white and the yellow blending. Um, just have fun. Uh, so now we're moving into the green and a moment ago it did say take a progress photo so make sure you grab that and literally slapping that direct green paint on there, play with applying it a little bit thicker, play with the thinner areas. Right now as a first time painter you're just getting comfortable with your tools. So here grabbed a bit of that direct yellow, slapped it on top of the green, and then same thing, move your brush on top of it and just observe how the colors are blending and mixing. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. I do want you to let your painting dry before you move into your design. Um, An acrylic paint usually dries in about 15 minutes. So with the pointy brush, you can add a little bit of water to your black paint and that will help your fluidity. But if you're already using runny paint, do not add water to it. And as we go step by step, pause the video as you need to and just observe each shape 
and the placement I put it compared to the shape prior. You are strengthening your observation. Um, you're going to do better than you think you're capable of. Like I said, pause the video as needed and go at your pace. And when we get to the final result, you're actually going to notice that my, um, my Eiffel Tower is dancing in the wind a little bit. So if yours happens to dance in the wind or have a little bit of style or character, that just makes your painting even cooler and more unique. So remember to breathe and just relax. I'm really proud of you for painting. Um, you're doing a great job. And this is something, this is a skill that gets better and easier with more practice. If you mess up here, don't freak out. Um, you can take a uh, paper towel and you can wipe off your maybe if you got a piece of black paint somewhere that you didn't want, or we just kind of incorporate that into the design. Um, when you're beginning painting, I want you to paint a lot of different things and I want you to paint on a regular basis because the more comfortable you get with the process, um, the greater your uh, chance of learning and uh, improving your skills uh, grows. So basically just keep learning, push yourself past your comfort zone in the creative world, and you will impress yourself with what you do. As we fill in the details of our Eiffel Tower, these are just X marks. So again, just kind of notice the general place of where I go. This would be the structure of the tower. Um, if you want to change anything about this, if you have a specific image in mind, um, you're more than welcome to reference that. If you even want to use this background and do a different silhouette of a cityscape or something else, um, just use this as a base, but make it your own. Full permission in the creative world to uh, turn this into your own creation. <laughs> All right, so now we're going back to the green and yellow mixture. We're going to put some foliage around our tower. And as here, I'm holding the brush perpendicular to the canvas. I'm using that medium flat brush and literally stabbing the canvas with the tips of the brush. And this creates kind of a nice texture. It does pull the bristles apart. Um, so again, using that student grade paint, be rather generous with the amount you are applying. And then here, just giving a bit of a highlight in the grass in front of the Eiffel Tower. Going back to the foliage with a bit darker, and if you want to go in with some other colors, if you want to put flowers in here, again, full permission to make this your own and change it up. So no matter what you do, whether you paint this exactly or make it your own, send me photos. Um, those are some of my favorite emails in the morning to uh, open up and look at your pictures. And a lot of you have been sending me pictures on a regular basis and I am watching your skills evolve. So really exciting to see and it gives me a lot of encouragement to continue making these. As you add the white here, um, you don't have to be exact. Just again, general placement where you see I'm putting this. And if some of it's pure white, maybe some of it's a little gray, some of the texture of the canvas shows through, totally okay. All right, you're doing a great job. So here I'm going back to that dark gray or dark green. And um, thanks for painting with me today. I look forward to painting with you again in the future. Cheers. Hey guys, I hope your paintings turned out really nice and I hope you feel a little more relaxed now at the end of painting compared to when you started. I'm really, really, really proud of you for painting at home. So uh, good job. Don't wait too long to do another painting and just kind of hone in the skills that you learned today. It will be more comfortable um, the next time that you go to paint. As you're uploading your pictures to social media, please tag me in those photos, paint with lovejoy, or email them to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, I'm a fully solo production here, so seeing your feedback, hearing your comments, um, really kind of gives me motivation to keep making these videos and it is growing really, really nicely. Um, when you are ready, I do have something that you can kind of uh, level up to. So I want you to check out my main website, paintwithlovejoy.com. And I feature my paint your pet class and it is geared towards first time and beginner painters. So check that out when you're ready to kind of take the next level of painting at home. 
If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, things that you would like me to paint in the future, please leave a comment below. I do my best to respond to all of those pretty quickly. And like I said earlier, your feedback is definitely keeping me uh, going and keeping me make more videos. So it is your support that's making this happen. Um, so yeah, thanks again for taking time out of your day to paint with me. I'm honored, truly grateful that uh, you're finding a lot of help in these videos and enjoying the process of painting. So until next time, cheers.